Welcome to The Daily for Tuesday, May 21st. With Andrew Wiebe, I'm Jason Seguini. A momentous day here at MLS as the 20th franchise was announced, and it was they went big, Andrew, with mm -hmm. this announcement. Manchester City and the New York Yankees are partnering up to take on the 20th team in MLS. A lot of excitement around here. Yeah, New York City FC is the moniker for this one. This is expected. We knew that this was probably coming at some point. So much work going into this project over the past few years to create that 20th team here in New York City. Now the New York Red Bulls obviously have an inner city rival. A few details, though, to get to. When they'll start play, it's expected to be 2015, but certainly those details will likely shake out in the coming months. And then as far as the stadium goes, MLS has been clear. They have been targeting a site in Flushing Meadows Park in Queens. Still no confirmation on that. That's also a detail that we'll have to wait to see what happens. All right, we caught up with Commissioner Don Garber and the CEO of Manchester City, Ferran Soriano, this morning. Today's another big day in uh, the history of Major League Soccer for uh, the 18 years of MLS's history, uh, we've always had a plan for a second team in New York. The belief that uh, a rival for the New York Red Bulls would allow Major League Soccer to break through the enormous clutter of the almost a dozen pro sports teams in this market. We're so pleased to uh, form a relationship with Manchester City, last year's Premier League champion, FA uh, Cup champion, and our newest partner, uh, the New York Yankees, a 27 time world champion for the sport of baseball. It's a great partnership. That partnership will start working on finalizing a stadium uh, for a team that will begin play in a temporary facility in 2015. Yes, yeah, this came very uh, recently. We do have a commercial relationship with the, with the Yankees through Legends in Manchester. So, uh, you know, the last weeks, uh, we, I think we, we were lucky and we're very satisfied that, we, that the Yankees are going to be part of the, of the ownership group so that we uh, have uh, together uh, one of the best, one of the top sports companies in, in the world with a great New York tradition and one of the top football or soccer clubs in the world. So I think it's, it's the perfect partnership. We're going to be the, the majority owners. The Yankees are going to be a minority owners, but they'll be active in the management of this. And I, I'm, I'm sure we're going we're gonna to have one of the top sports organization in the world. Well, the LA Galaxy in the news for a couple reasons. We'll start with Robbie Rogers, the potential end to the Robbie Rogers saga. He could be back on the field shortly if you believe what he's saying. Yeah, he's saying that there should be something that was worked out in the next few weeks between the perhaps the LA Galaxy and the Chicago Fire. LA seems to be the only landing place for him at this point. He said, I want to stay in California. This is where I'm comfortable. This is where I'm willing to make my comeback. So we'll have to wait and see and watch that one. It's just a matter of a deal being worked out, it seems, at this point, if you believe what Rogers is saying. All right, and Juninho, but not the LA Juninho, had some words about Landon Donovan and the preferential treatment he's getting from the referees. Yeah, it's no surprise, really. He said Landon Donovan gets a ton of respect. We all knew that, but he said he thinks that manifests itself with the referees. Once again, no surprise there. We've heard of the Michael Jordan rule. We mm -hmm. see it in the NBA. We see it in pretty much any sport you look at across the professional level. Landon Donovan gets a little bit more, perhaps, according to Juninho, but he said his disadvantage is he doesn't speak English. So maybe once he starts to pick up the language a bit more, he'll be even. Certainly, though, he's going to take that three points the Red Bulls earned this weekend against Donovan in L.A. Well, it's Tuesday, so it's time to take a look at the updated Castrol Index from this past weekend. And Andrew, Eddie Johnson, no surprise, he won Player of the Week. He is at the top of the list on the Castrol Index. Yeah, two goals, that's an easy one. The index pushing him to the top. He's followed up by Landon Donovan for L.A. Andy Grunebaum out there in, Col in uh, Columbus with that shutout. Lamar Nagel, also a goal for the Seattle Sounders. Then Luis Robles really stood on his head at points in that win for the Red Bulls. Well, Luis Robles continues a phenomenal season for the Red Bulls. First place atop the East. You can check out where they end up on the power rankings today on MLSsoccer.com. Also, instant replay out on the site. Simon Borg's take on all the controversy from the weekend, and there was plenty of it. I also want to mention, we will continue to follow the story. Manchester City and the New York Yankees partnering up to take on the 20th franchise. New York City FC expected to begin in 2015. We'll have all the coverage here on MLSsoccer.com.